But first, let's talk inflation and Brian Sazi's little shopping trip this weekend where he went to get the steak that he frequently gets and found, as we have found many of the times when a lot of folks have been going grocery shopping as of late, the prices have been going up. And, you know, what I noticed this morning, Saz, you wrote about this in this morning brief, but you were not the only one whose mind was on inflation. I think many of the front pages this morning, as we look ahead to earnings season, are focused on this question of inflation, how persistent it's going to be, and what effect it's going to have on the economy. Well, I'm starting to be shocked, Julie, by some of these prices in the grocery stores. And I, I just want to say I thank everyone for their suggestions uh, that have come to me on Twitter on how to beat this inflation. One person suggested I just cut back on steak and start making hamburgers every week, which, you know, makes sense. I do like a good hamburger. But really, some of the prices uh, right now in food uh, is really starting to go through the roof. And I, I went to the supermarket, picked up my usual two cut of steak, a two inch ribeye. Usually uh, it's about under 30 bucks here. It's my week treat. You know, it's something I enjoy very much. I put it in my basket this time around. It cost me about $45. And I really, I didn't want to be that person to, to leave the line. Just my luck. Somebody is a viewer, Julie. They snap a picture of me leaving the line, putting my $45, $45 steak back. And now I'm suddenly an internet meme. And I didn't want to be that. But I think inflation uh, remains very much top of mind here for the markets. Uh, and as it should be, we're going to get a CPI report this week that is likely to hint at really ongoing high levels of inflation, natural gas is up, crude oil is up, uh, livestock, uh, just feed, fertilizer, we've talked about this, that was, that, that's up. You have executives coming on our show uh, saying that they are now pushing through some serious price increases. That is likely to lead to more price increases in 2022. So inflation is real, it's ugly, it's sticky, and I encourage everyone to read the Morning Brief newsletter today. Um, I, I just want to put a fine point on one thing that you were saying there, and that's energy prices. And hopefully we have the price of oil that we can pull up this morning because it is continuing to push higher. If you look at WTI or Brent, either way, you're talking about an increase. Now, we should point out there's one thing I would perhaps not just one thing, but there's something I would quibble about in this morning brief, which is when you talk about the Fed sort of brushing off all of this as transitory, the Fed has not used the word transitory in its statements for several months now, right? And we have heard from Jay Powell that inflation is more persistent than the Fed had determined. I gotta say, anybody who tells you they know the inflation level at this time next year, is not necessarily being intellectually honest because it's very difficult to say how long and how large these increases are going to continue to be. And most economists are still saying that we're going to see all of these delays that we've seen, all of these bottlenecks that we're seeing start to work their way uh, past where they are right now. How quickly will that happen? I don't know. But the IMF came out and said that we're going to see annual inflation in advanced economies peak at 3.6% on average in the final months of this year before reverting in the first half of next year to 2%. Are they correct? I don't know again. But the point is, uh, you know, we keep talking about over and over again on this show, Saz, how difficult it is to predict things right now. And so for us to say that we know that inflation is going to be transitory or we know that it's going to be incredibly persistent, I think is really difficult to say. What we can say is that right now, when you go to the grocery store, you are likely going to be paying more for a number of different products. And many of the companies that we're hearing from this week when they report are gonna be talking about rising costs. Yeah, what I, well, I, I do know, Julie. I, I think a year from now, I'm still probably paying 40 bucks for my two inch thick ribeye. Well, okay, I, I just, maybe I, you're paying 40 bucks, but you're not paying 50 bucks or 60 bucks. And remember, if we're talking about inflation being transitory or not, we're not talking about it staying where it is right now. We're talking about it continuing to go up at a pace that makes economic growth very difficult to sustain. So just to point that out, we're also, in the eyes of the Fed, not talking about steak or gasoline. We're talking about non-food and energy costs. Oh yeah, well yeah, we uh, you're right. We should always forget about uh, what households are actually paying for in terms of when they go to the grocery store, they have for a heating the bill, they're hit over the head with inflation. Rate. You can't forget yeah. can't forget that stuff. Can't forget it. You can't skip it if you're talking about economic growth, but the Fed as we know, that's the Fed measures what it measures.
Well, and they're wrong. But I do want to, I want to mention this, Julie, because there is another sidebar to this story here. Uh, there are ways to invest for inflation here. I didn't want to come out here and just put photos of myself walking down the grocery store aisles holding uh, a really a $43 uh, picture of steak as I took uh, in the newsletter here. You know, I talked to a lot of strategists on the street, and there are a lot of them are increasingly bullish on small caps because of inflation, increasingly bullish on dividend stocks. Uh, one uh, strategist I talked to actually also re recommended REITs here uh, in large part because supply uh, the supply of homes is short and REITs could push through higher prices. So there are ways to do this. It's not necessarily because of this rising, these rising levels of inflation. You just go all into cash and you worry about a market correction here. There are ways to ride this. And of course, uh, you have seen a continued bullish bias or a bullish trade or a bid under energy stocks, which certainly makes sense to me. Well, and P.S., it's not just particular sectors. Goldman Sachs, which, as you flagged us this morning, cut its GDP forecast for 21 and 22, not by much, by a tenth of a percentage point or so. On the econ economist side, Jan Hatzi is cutting those estimates. But on the strategist side, David Costin says you still want to buy stocks. He said in a, the strategist over at Goldman, led by Costin, said, we believe this dip will prove a good buying opportunity, as 5% pullbacks usually have in the past. And that implies that they are expecting a pullback before the end of the year. But they're saying by that dip, JP Morgan seems to be saying the same. So not even just that you need to hide somewhere, but they're saying you still want to buy in the dip, the overall market. To me, that's weird. So you have one side of your team cutting your growth estimates for 2022. Theoretically, theoretically that means slowing sales and slowing earnings growth for the S&P 500. Yet on the other side of the team, you're saying, go out and buy stocks. Uh, li listen, I think we are in a slowing just me. I, I think we're in a slowing growth environment with high levels of inflation, whether that's stagflation or not. And I think you have to be choosier on, on picking stocks. The trades that worked well uh, in the earlier part of this year are unlikely to work into year end. I think stocks can still rise in an environment. And maybe you're talking about slowing growth, but you're still talking about above 4% growth, above 4.5% growth. Julie, you told me year, you don't make stock call. Out. I'm shocked. I'm shocked by this call. Uh, you told me long ago. You don't I'm make not stock making reasons. the call. I, wow. I'm not making wow. the call. I'm reporting right. on the call that is being made. Okay. Just, okay. Just to be clear.